Good morning. You are listening to Upreach. Let's begin this day together with some inspiring thoughts from God's Holy Word. In the 36th year of the reign of Asa, Baasha, king of Israel, came up against Judah and built Ramah, that he might let none go out or come in to Asa, king of Judah. Then Asa brought silver and gold from the treasuries of the house of the Lord and of the king's house, and sent to Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, who dwelt in Damascus, saying, Let there be a treaty between you and me, as there was between my father and your father. See, I have sent you silver and gold. Come, break your treaty with Baasha, king of Israel, so that he will withdraw from me. So Ben-Hadad heeded King Asa and sent the captains of his armies against the cities of Israel. They attacked Ijon, Dan, Abel-Maim, and all the storage cities of Naphtali. Now it happened when Baasha heard it that he stopped building Ramah and ceased his work. Then King Asa took all Judah, and they carried away the stones and timber of Ramah, which Baasha had used for building, and with them he built Geba and Mizpah. And at that time Hanani, the seer, came to Asa, king of Judah, and said to him, Because you have relied on the king of Syria, and have not relied on the Lord your God, therefore the army of the king of Syria has escaped from your hand. Were the Ethiopians and the Lubim not a huge army with very many chariots and horsemen? Yet because you relied on the Lord, he delivered them into your hand. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. In this you have done foolishly. Therefore, from now on, you shall have wars. Second Chronicles chapter 16, verses 1 through 9. Asa is a godly king of Judah. There are two kingdoms during his reign, Judah and Israel. Israel's king is Baasha, who is a wicked king. To the east of Judah is Damascus, whose king is Ben-Hadad. Asa is an amazingly faithful and righteous king for 35 years. He gets rid of the idol worship and even deposes his mother for idol worship. God blesses his rule by allowing peace in the land for 35 years. When Asa comes into power, the nation is lost. There is no godly ruler. There are many wars, and the people have begun to cry out to God for deliverance. God sends them Asa. When Judah is attacked by Zerah the Cushite, who marches against them with a vast army and 300 chariots, Asa calls upon the Lord, and God answers his prayer and delivers them from a larger and stronger army than Judah's. However, 35 years later, Asa begins to move away from trusting God and decides he can buy the favor of his enemy, the king of Ben-Hadad. Asa sends gold and silver to him as a bribe, asking Ben-Hadad to cancel his treaty with King Baasha and go to war on behalf of Asa and Judah. Asa's strategy works, and he defeats Israel. However, there is a cost. And in the thirty-ninth year of his reign, Asa became diseased in his feet, and his malady was severe. Yet in his disease he did not seek the Lord, but the physicians. So Asa rested with his fathers. He died in the forty-first year of his reign. They buried him in his own tomb, which he had made for himself in the city of David. And they laid him in the bed, which was filled with spices and various ingredients prepared in a mixture of ointments. They made a very great burning for him. Second Chronicles chapter 16, verses 12 through 14. What we learn from Asa is that whenever we place our trust and obedience in the Lord, God becomes our source for security and prosperity. However, when we move away from trusting God, that security is removed, and we fail to receive those things God intended us to have. What about you today? Are you placing all your trust only in the Lord for the things you need to navigate through your life in this world? Why not give him your whole heart today? This has been Upreach, a presentation of the Church Street Church of Christ in Lewisburg, Tennessee. I am Kyle Bolton, the pulpit minister at Church Street, and I would like to personally invite you to come and share times of Bible study and worship with us each week. We meet every Sunday at 9 o'clock a.m. for our morning worship, followed by our Sunday school for all ages at 10.15 a.m. Then we meet again at 6 o'clock p.m. for our evening worship. We also have a midweek meeting for devotion and Bible study on Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. I hope to see you there. Have a blessed day.